Good morning. Good morning. I would like to welcome everyone to worship, all of you who are worshiping here in person and those watching online. I'm Pastor Maggie, and I'm so grateful to be worshiping with all of you today. I invite you all to settle in, to allow yourself a chance to breathe, and to center yourself with our Creator and with one another by hearing the words from Psalm 145. You, O Creator, are faithful in all your words and loving in all your works, and you are near to all who call upon you. Please stand as you are able. And I should have announced, I do apologize, we ran out of bulletins, so if you did not get a bulletin, there's a QR code above the, um, the little table at the back of the sanctuary, above the candles. You can pull that up, it'll pull up our website, or you can download it if you know our website, stjohnwassa.org, or go on Facebook and get our bulletin this morning. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the God of manna, the God of miracles, the God of mercy. Amen. Let us confess to our God. For God is just in all ways and pours out mercy, grace, and love. Holy God, you uphold those who are falling and raise up all who are bowed down. Therefore, we confess our sins, both things we have done and things we have left undone in every confidence that you will open your hands to us in an embrace of forgiveness and love. Amen. God's beloved, through the power of the Spirit that is at work within us, God forgives our sins and strengthens our inner beings. Live knowing the love of Christ fills you with the fullness of grace and love. Thanks be to God. Let us sing our gathering hymn, God is Here, number 526.
Let us pray. Generous God, you provide for us far more than we expect or imagine possible. Calm our fears, speak peace to us, lead us beyond ourselves. Grant that our inner beings may be strengthened through your spirit and that Christ may dwell in our hearts through faith. Amen. Please be seated. Good morning. The first reading this morning is from 2 Kings chapter 4, verses 42 through 44. A man came from Baal Shalisha, bringing food from the first fruits to Elijah, the man of God, 20 loaves of barley and fresh ears of grain in his sack. Elijah said, Give it to the people and let them eat. But his servants said, how can I set this before a hundred people? So he repeated, Give it to the people and let them eat. For thus says the Lord, They shall eat and have some left. He set it before them, they ate and, and had some left, according to the word of the Lord. Word of God, word of life. Amen. We'll read Psalm 145 responsibly. All your works... And all your works shall praise you, O Lord, and your faithful ones shall bless you. They tell this kingdom and speak of your power, that all people may know of your power and the glorious splendor of your kingdom. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. Your dominion endures throughout all ages. You, Lord, are faithful in all your words and loving in all your works. The Lord upholds all those who fall and lifts up those who are bowed down. The eyes of all wait upon you, O Lord, and give them their food in due season. You open wide your hand and satisfy the desire of every living thing. You are righteous in all your ways and loving in all your works. You are near, you are near to all who call upon you to all who call upon you faithfully. Word of God, word of life. The second reading this morning is from the third chapter of Ephesians, verses 14 through 21. <clears throat> For this reason I bow my knees before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth takes its name. I pray that according to the riches of his glory, he may grant that you may be strengthened in your inner being with power through his spirit, and that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, as you are being rooted and grounded in love. I pray that you may have the powers to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth, and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge so that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Now to him who, by the power at work within us, is able to accomplish abundantly far more than all we can ask or imagine, to him be glory in the church and in Jesus Christ, to all generations, forever and ever. Amen. Word of God, word of life. Please stand as you are able as we welcome the gospel. Hallelujah, Lord and Savior, open now your saving word. Let it burn like fire within us, speak until our hearts are stirred. The Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Our gospel is a little longer today, so you may be seated. Jesus went to the other side of the Sea of Galilee, 
also called the Sea of Tiberias. A large crowd kept following him because they saw the signs that he was doing for the sick. Jesus went up the mountain and sat down there with his disciples. Now the Passover, the festival of the Jews, was near. When he looked up and saw a large crowd coming toward him, Jesus said to Philip, Where are we to buy bread for these people to eat? He said this to test him, for he himself knew what he was going to do. Philip answered him, Six months' wages would not buy enough bread for each of them to get a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to him, There is a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish, but what are they among so many people? Jesus said, Make the people sit down. Now there was a great deal of grass in the place, so they sat down, about 5,000 in all. Then Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed them to those who were seated, so also the fish, as much as they wanted. When they were satisfied, he told his disciples, Gather up the fragments left over, so nothing may be lost. So they gathered them up, and from the fragments of the five barley loaves left by those who had eaten, they filled twelve baskets. When the people saw the sign that he had done, they began to say, This is indeed the prophet who is to come into the world. When Jesus realized that they were about to come and take him by force to make him king, he withdrew again to the mountain by himself. When evening came, his disciples went down to the sea, got into a boat, and started across the sea to Capernaum. It was now dark, and Jesus had not yet come to them. The sea became rough because a strong wind was blowing. When they had rowed about three or four miles, they saw Jesus walking on the sea and coming near the boat, and they were terrified. But he said to them, it is I. Do not be afraid. Then they wanted to take him into the boat, and immediately the boat reached the land toward which they were going. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Children may come forward. Good morning. How are you all doing today? Good. Do you know what this means when we have this out? A baptism. Exactly. What are some things you remember about baptism? You get your hair wet. That is very true. <laughs> Anybody else remember anything about baptism? Yes, you get marked with the cross. And what does the cross symbolize? A child of God, exactly. Very good, Billy. So when you're baptized, you're baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and you become God's child. So that's a promise to God to all of you, right? At your baptism, that you're loved. And the cool thing about baptism is not only God makes promises, but we make promises. Can you remember some of the promises you've heard in the past at baptism? Do you think maybe to tell people about God's love? and to teach them the scriptures, the kind of things we hear during church, during vacation Bible school. So it's our promise to lead them in the Christian life as a child of God. Because when you lead people in the Christian life and you're kind to them, God can take those gifts and do something really cool with them. We heard in our gospel today that Jesus took the gifts of some fish and some bread and he took it to feed 5,000 people. Is that pretty cool? Yeah. So I'm going to show you what can happen when you bring your gifts to God. We're going to do a small size experiment because if we did it with a really big bottle of soda, it would be all over the ceiling. <laughs> so we got a little bottle of soda. 
So this is going to represent the world. Right now, maybe the world's kind of sad, so it needs some of God's love, right? Yeah. yeah, I think so. So we'll open up the world, and we'll put it in here to keep it safe. And this is your act of love and kindness towards others, right? Telling people about how much God loves them. All right, so let's see what happens when we do that. Did it overflow? Yeah. yeah. That's pretty cool, huh? It's going all over. <laughs> all over the jar. So our world is even bigger than this. So just imagine what God can do when you are kind to others and you show others your kindness. It can explode kindness to everyone. That's pretty cool, huh? Yeah. All right, let's give thanks to God for that in prayer. Dear Jesus, thank you for loving us. Thank you for showing us how to love others. Help your grace make us love others every day. In Jesus we pray. Amen. All right, you guys can head back to your seat. Let us pray. Loving God, be with us today. Invite us into the fullness of life through your abundance of grace. Transform the world through the gifts we bring and the love we share. Amen. The concerts on the square have become a popular summer outing on Wednesdays and have grown in attendance over the years. In fact, their website states that on average, 2,000 500 people attend every Wednesday concert. And if you have ever been to one or have been downtown on a concert night, you know how quickly that space becomes crowded with people. And our gospel today talks about a crowd even larger than that, a crowd of 5,000 people. People not in search of a concert, but people who are hungry for a new way of life. As we hear in our gospel, that Passover, the festival of the Jews, was near. And this is an important detail, because Passover during this time was always celebrated in the temple. And yet we have this massive crowd, Jesus and his disciples, nowhere near the temple. Rather, they are in the middle of nowhere, surrounded by a large grassy field. Because these people are in search of something greater than anything they have ever known. They are hungry to be with Jesus, to learn from him and to experience God's grace, goodness, healing, and love. And I imagine that their world was not too different than our world. Because I also hunger for those things. I hunger for God's grace goodness, healing, and love to be poured out in abundance. Poured out over me. Poured out over all of you. Poured out over the entire world. Because the world can feel really big sometimes. Making it so easy to wonder, what can I do that will make a difference? especially since so many of the world's problems are really big issues. Wars raging in other countries, messy politics, climate change, polluted waterways, poverty, inequality, and any forms of oppression and hate towards others. And then there are other issues, so often out of your control, but equally as devastating. Disease, sickness, and loss. All to say that the world can feel overwhelming at times, and because of that, it can feel like we are unequipped to make a difference. 
And so we go on hungering for a different world, a better world, where God's grace saturates all things in the abundance of God's love. Which brings us back to our gospel, as we have this massive crowd of people hungering for a different world, a better world, who in their hunger completely forget to bring actual food with them. With one small exception, a child. As there was a young boy who brought a meager five barley loaves and two fish. However, when he gave those five barley loaves and two fish to Jesus, something amazing happened. As this meal shows us what grace upon grace looks like in all of its abundance. As Jesus takes this small meal and feeds it not only to 5,000 people, but also produces 12 baskets of leftovers. Which means this act is not only about what grace upon grace looks like, this is also what grace upon grace tastes like and feels like. As this is the kind of abundance that satisfies more than physical hunger. It satisfies spiritual hunger and what we yearn for in the world. After all, this meal is not really about the bread and the fish. Rather, it is about what Jesus does with the meal. Jesus shares this meal and does so by giving of himself entirely, which has an astonishing result. It produces an overabundance an overabundance that fills our world and our lives, an overabundance that was first rooted in this world from what little the boy had given and from what you and others have given. As it is God who takes our gifts and exponentially multiplies them in God's abundant love and grace, which takes the weight of the world off your shoulders, because grace is not about what you can do. Rather, it is what God can do through you. Because God is constantly at work in you, through you and with your many gifts. From your personal gifts of what makes you, you. To your earthly gifts of time, donations, and contributions. With those gifts, God can transform the world creating a world God desires, a world where all the hungry are fed, a world that is possible through all people, even the least of us or the smallest of us. After all, it was the young boy from the gospel, out of all the 5,000 people there, who gave Jesus some bread and fish. And we are invited to do the same to notice the many gifts, not only in yourselves, but also in others. By loving, supporting, and encouraging others, and especially our youth, who are quite awesome here at St. John. As this is central to our call as Christians, and is upheld through the sacrament of baptism, we're in, that's you, yes. <laughs> We're in just a little bit. We will welcome our newest member through baptism, Charlie Grace Poggle. And in baptism, we are reminded of God's promises and how they are poured out. Well, at the same time, it is also in baptism where our promises are made. The promise to pray for and support Charlie and to help her grow in the Christian faith and life, so she can hear and learn from the good news of Scripture, like we did today, when we heard this good news, that the possibilities are endless when we give our gifts to God. As God saturates our gifts in the abundance of God's love and transforms the world, from a world that we hunger for into a world where all are fed. Amen.
Will Jesse, Katie, Ashley, Cherish, Tammy, and Charlie please join me at the front of the church? I'll have the sponsors on this side and then parents over here on this side with me. God, who is rich in mercy and love, gives us a new birth into a living hope through the sacrament of baptism. By water and word, God delivers us from sin and death and raises us to new life in Jesus Christ. We are united with all the baptized in the one body of Christ, anointed with the gift of the Holy Spirit, and joined in God's mission for life of the world. Ashley, Cherish, and Tammy. Will you please present the candidate for baptism? We present Charlie Grace Powell for baptism. Jesse and Katie, called by the Holy Spirit, trusting in the grace and love of God, do you desire to have your child baptized into Christ? As you bring your child to receive the gift of baptism, you are entrusted with responsibilities to live with her among God's faithful people, Bring her to the world of God and the Holy Supper. Teach her the Lord's Prayer, the Creed, and the Ten Commandments. Place in her hands the Holy Scriptures and nurture her in faith and prayer, so that she may learn to trust God, proclaim Christ through word and deed, care for others and the world God made, and work for justice and peace. Do you promise to help her grow in the Christian life and faith? Ashley, Cherish, and Tammy, do you promise to nurture Charlie in the Christian faith as you are empowered by God's Spirit and help her to live in the covenant of baptism and in communion with the church? People of St. John, do you promise to support Charlie and pray for her in her new life in Christ? If so, please respond with we do. Jesse, Katie, Cherish, Ashley, and Tammy, I ask you to profess your faith in Jesus Christ, reject sin, and confess the faith of the church. Do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God, the powers of this world that rebel against God, and the ways of sin that draw you from God? People of St. John, do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father, Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters, and by your word you created the world, calling forth in life which you took the light. Through the waters of the flood you delivered Noah and his family, and through the sea you led your people, Israel, from slavery into freedom. At the river your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By the baptism of Jesus' death and resurrection, you set us free from the power of sin and death and raise us up to live in you. Pour out your Holy Spirit, the power of your living word, that those who are washed in the waters of baptism may be given new life 
to you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. All right, are you ready? You can bring her on over here. Charlie Grace Poggle, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. There we go. Just like the kids said, you get wet. <laughs> and you did very good. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O oh God, that through water and the Holy Spirit you give your new children new birth that you cleanse them from sin and raise them to eternal life. Sustain Charlie Grace Poggle with the gift of your Holy Spirit and the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence both now and forever. Amen. Charlie Grace Poggle, child of God, you have been marked and sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. Amen. You're good. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will have the light of life. Let us welcome the newly baptized. We welcome you into the body of Christ and into the mission we share. Join us in giving thanks and praise to God and bearing God's creative and redeeming world to all the world. All right, I will give this to the sponsors and we continue with our baptismal hymn, I was there to hear your morning cry, number 732. All right.
seated. Oh, yeah, you can blow that out. Thank you. You may be seated. You did so good. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry, Tim. Please stand as you are able. One in the communion of saints and in the power of the Holy Spirit, we join our voices in prayer, responding to in your mercy with receive our prayer. Wondrous God, you work in us far more than we can ask or imagine. Bless the church you have called into being across time and space and fill it with the power of the spirit of your loving service. In your mercy. God of field and forest, streams and seas, you are the fullness of all things. As grains of wheat grow upon the earth and fish swim in the waters, sustain your creation. Protect harvest and give every person food in due season. In your mercy. Loving God, bless the work of humanitarians and peacekeepers. Shield those who live, work, or serve in harm's way, and bring an end to war and conflict. In your mercy. Abiding God, pour out your Holy Spirit on our country. Help mend divisions, cultivate safe and healthy debate, and provide the best way forward for our country to come together in the way you vision. In your mercy. Healing God, we pray for all who are sick or injured, and for those who struggle with mental health. Meet each person with healing, love, and hope. Today we especially pray for Greg Melander, Ron Moots, Susan Knight, Lee Sillers, Aline Hovey, Mary Kay Vandergeest, Gary Zuman, Janie Smith, Shelley Kufall, Dorothy Westfall, Rose Rosenau, Brad Campbell, Jill Kors, Shabby Teske, Annie Ormont, Jim Klinger, Thea Heil, and Carol Fitzke. In your mercy. Gracious God, abounding in thanksgiving, we pray for all the members of St. John and all who come through our doors. We lift up this week's prayer ministry, and we pray for Josh Hine, Kelly Rosenau, Renner Stubbe, Barb Paulson, Chad Walter, Emma Nowak, Macy Landwehr, Madison Hine, Leopold Schiller, Patricia Spangler, Nicole Knight, Mason Milkey, and Adeline Vandergeest. In your mercy. Holy God, holy and merciful, into your outstretched arms we commend ourselves and for all whom we pray, trusting in the one who is the way, the truth, and the life, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. I invite you all to share the sign of peace however you feel comfortable. Because a little boy shared his bread and fish, a multitude ate. Let us share what has been given to us as we continue with our offering.
please stand as you are able while we sing, Let the Vineyards Be Fruitful. Let us pray. God of abundance, we rejoice with thanksgiving for all we have received. Multiply these gifts that we give so that the world may more deeply know the fullness of life in you. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty, and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed, by you, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray how Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. We'll have continuous communion today. There is gluten-free wafers available upon request. I will commune the front pew on both sides, and then we will start with the continuous communion. And if you are unable to come forward, I will bring communion to you in your pew. We are here because Jesus has called us. Strangers and friends, locals and visitors, believers and doubters, the certain and the curious, all are invited to Christ's table, where in bread and wine, he meets us, and through him, we who are different are joined to each other. So come now to Christ's banquet. Amen. I invite the communion assistants to come forward.
May the body and blood of Jesus Christ strengthen your faith and give you the assurance of forgiveness and unite you with Christ and one another. Let us pray. Jesus, bread of life, at your table we have tasted your goodness. With the eyes of our hearts open to your promise, empower us to hear the needs of our neighbors and touch the world with your love. Amen. An announcement before we end, First English is looking for volunteers to help with their food stand at the Wisconsin River Valley Fair. If you are interested and able to help, please let me know and I can further direct you with that. Are there any other announcements? Then please stand as you are able to receive the blessing. May God's grace fill every molecule of your being so you may know how much you are loved by the creator of the universe. May the hope that lives in Christ fill your heart with peace and strength, so you may be rejuvenated in mind and body. May the Holy Spirit burn bright in you and bring joy to your heart, so you may share joy and kindness with all creation. And may you always feel the embrace of the Holy Trinity 
so you may join in their dance that lingers on in every moment. Amen. Let us sing our sending hymn, O Living Bread from Heaven, number 542. Go forth, rooted and grounded in love, that all people may know God's abundance. Thanks be to God.